Hello. As you can see down here, we are doing a lot of stretching today. So foam rollers are gonna be needed. And we're gonna go through a nice calm Rift Wing Designs for Zen stretch yoga session. So to get started today, you're gonna need to have your mat and you're gonna have to have some sort of a roller. And if you don't, unfortunately, it's gonna be a little difficult. So this is the foam roller. Mine is a trigger point. I actually really love these because they've got these different textures. You can have a plain foam roller or you can have one that has like crazy bumps. It's really up to your level of comfort. It's so funny because this is like the palm of your hand or the plain part. These are like the long parts of your fingers and these are like fingertips. So they give different massages depending on where you get it. It's a little pricey, but since it is the Black Friday weekend, they're a little bit cheaper if you go to your retailers or maybe a fitness center that's a local near you. The other option, if you've attended the ball yoga, again, my videos are on YouTube, but even something like a tennis ball would be good just to roll it and it puts such pressure, but you want it to be something firm. So like a lacrosse ball or a floor hockey ball or tennis ball. I have the sock, which you may remember from uh, the, the massage yoga we've done before. You put a couple socks into a, a couple balls into a long sock here, right? And there you go. So that kind of makes a little roller. So if you need to hack it, you can. I don't think like, we've talked about paper towel rolls before. It'd probably be a little too squishy, but Desperate times call for desperate measures. So <laughs> make do with what you've got, but you want something that'll roll back and forth. And I'm just gonna be doing today's session using the roller. So if you have the balls, just modify to what feels right for you. So to get started today, once you've got your playlist of choice playing, you will take your roller and you're going to put it at one end. We're going to start in Savasana. So again, we've had options before in our designs for Zen using aids in yoga in order to get to that Savasana state. So we're going to be laying on your back, but the three options that I would recommend is having it underneath your knees. If you want it under your calves, you can get a little massage going there. Or if you want it under your ankles, that'll give you a little bit of an inversion. So wherever you wanna be, find your way down into your Savasana. Shoulders can be back and roll your body. Finding comfort here. So today for Designs for Zen, we are all about relaxation. Just notice how you're feeling. Let your eyes start to close. Scan your body. Notice how things feel. Notice your thoughts. We're gonna do things a little differently today by having the laying meditation and setting an intention. So think about what you would like to focus on for your practice. And if it's just finding peace, that's great. Focus on whatever your intention is. Setting it in, we'll do two deep breaths. Inhale one, and let it out. And then the next really big deep breath in and let it all go. Sealing your intention for the class. Just scan your body, starting at your feet and noticing if they can be adjusted anymore. Notice where your body is on the roller. Notice those pressure points. See how it feels. Maybe adjust it if you need to. And notice where your body touches the ground. Your glutes and your back. Your hands. Again, your hands can be palms up to receive energy or palms down to ground. And your shoulder blades and your neck. Maybe even roll your head from side to side. And then come to stillness. You're going to stay here for another minute or so. We'll focus on your breathing. So now that we've noticed your breath, 
Notice your belly, how it rises and falls. Notice your back, how it presses into the ground with each inhale. Feel the deepness of the breath, perhaps now starting to, again, take them in deeper, moving that diaphragm actively. And if you want, we can do it on count. So on your ready, inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four. At your own pace, you can go slower or faster. If you like the box breath, you can do that, holding at the top and bottom of each breath. But for today, we're just focusing on peace, bringing in that fresh air with each breath and letting go of any staleness, negativity that's in each exhale. Dedicate these next 50 minutes to your body and finding nice relaxation. And as much as it would be great just to end right here, we are gonna get moving. So first, maybe remove that roller from underneath your legs and just get into that full body stretch with your whole body touching the floor. Wriggling your wrists and ankles. Get a nice big stretch, breathing deeply here. And now that we're on the ground, we're gonna be doing one of my favorite poses, banana asana. So we're gonna take that, if you've got a nice long one, we're gonna put it to one side. You're gonna lay out again with hands up and then legs pointing down and you're gonna turn both the same direction towards your foam roller. Now if you want, you can hold on to it. Maybe that'll help you at the top. Uh, you can take your legs and you can cross them over. By crossing towards the outside, you'll get a bigger stretch on this side of the banana. And if you cross it the other way, it's a little less. Or you can just keep your legs separate if it's too much pressure. Alternatively, if you don't want to hold the banana up or on the side, maybe you could try putting your ankles on the roller. One of the most interesting parts of doing aid yoga is that you get to find what works for you. So if this feels weird, don't do it. I actually kind of like this. So I've got my feet on top of it, legs crossed, making a banana asana. Now for this, keep your hips down and your shoulders down. You want it to be a good side stretch and just breathe in. Again, notice your body. Notice how this feels. When I was practicing it this week, I decided my hips really, really wanted this. Sometimes I'll do it in bed when I wake up and I was like, yep, we're definitely doing banana because my hips are right here nice and sore. <laughs> so we're getting that good stretch in, breathing into it. And we'll do about 30 more seconds. So again, this is going to be a very slow paced session. You're not going to get a real workout. We'll do a couple things, but not too much. It's really all about stretch and release. Three more breaths. And when you're ready, come back to center first. Keep your legs on the ground. Just notice any difference here. If you need to do any stretches or twists, maybe even pulling your knees up, anything you need to get back to balance before we go to the other side. So again, take those options for your roller. Maybe see if you wanna hold it or put your legs on it on the other side. It could be different on the other side. And remember to keep those hips and shoulders down and just Make your banana the other way. Have fun experimenting here. And again, maybe make any adjustments, maybe try crossing your legs the other way. 
Now I'm calling this My Hero Academia themed because I am dressed up like Tanya Ieda, the class president, superhero extraordinaire in My, in my Hero Academia. But again, it's mostly just because I do cosplay and yoga at the same time. <laughs> But again, if you like the music, enjoy the theme. Okay, three more breaths here. And when you're ready again, come back out of it nice and slowly, flattening out, stretching as you need to, to get through this. And when you're ready, we're gonna ro roll over to our other side so you can go sideways and just kind of come up onto your hands and knees. Or if you wanna have some fun, grab the back of your legs, do some rocks. And when you're ready, rock all the way up, cross your legs, and then step back. And if you want, we can play with that a little bit too because yoga is all about play. So here's what it looks like. Back, forward, cross. Plant your hands, kick back. And you could go into a full plank here if you really wanted to. But it's just another interesting way to move your body. <laughs> All right, so wherever you are, we're gonna end in cat-cow. Uh, you can have your roller underneath you if you want, or you can just set it to the side. So this is all fours. Planting your hands, noticing how they touch the earth. And from here, start to exhale, going into your cat. Inhale, curving the back, going into cow. At your own pace, exhale, arching your back up. Inhale, pulling your chest through your shoulders here. At your own pace, feeling that stretch on your back. We're gonna do a lot with our back. And if it feels good to you, you can maybe look from side to side a little bit as you're doing it. Finding any motion or movement that works for you. Waking up the body after that baby savasana. And you know me, I love to do one cobra and a child's pose. All right, do any other movements that you need here. And then from here, we're actually going to take our roller and put your hands on it. So you're gonna put some weight on here so you don't roll away. Again, safety first. But just notice when your hands are gripping here, the difference, your table is at an angle now. Maybe try a cat cows like this. Notice how different that is. Notice the stability as you're switching from one to the other. Do your wrists move? If you don't have the wrist strength, again, this may be very difficult. You don't have to do it. But just, again, experiment, have fun here. Then the other option is you can rotate your hands and have the palms facing backwards. So I'm holding it like this. And this will give you a really deep wrist stretch. So you may be good just pressing your hands in here with your fingertips facing towards your legs. Roll your shoulders back, breathe, get that nice stretch in. And maybe you bend your elbows, maybe you do a cat cow, but only to your limit. You're gonna notice that pressure really quickly. Feel your body. <laughs> and then rotate your hands around. Maybe sink back, give them a little shake. You know, I like to interlace my hands and go one way. And then the other, <laughs> awesome. Just gonna shake them out. Maybe we'll do a couple shoulder rolls while we're here. Just because, again, this is your style of yoga. So if you ever need to stop and just do something on your own, do that. Again, I can't see you. All I can do is recommend things that might help you out. So from here, we're gonna go onto our belly and we're gonna do our quads and our hips first. So take your roller. And it's gonna go here. So get there however you need. If you need to go onto your fours and then lower down, almost doing a plank, do that. And so I'm gonna go onto my forearms here, almost like a modified sphinx. First, just staying still, noticing you're gonna have a little mini back bend, but also pressure on your quads. 
Keep your shoulders back. And then slowly start to rock forward and back. You might want to tuck your toes to push a little bit. You might want to lift up again if you have that upper body strength. And you want to feel how your quads <laughs> roll, okay? Forward and back. If you've got that ball, just put it under one, do it one at a time. So certain places are gonna be more than others. So I'm levitating, I got my feet flying. Cause for me, I really like to go more on my forearms with my hands together and just oof, get that pressure going. So this is again, that modification where you're gonna find what works for you. Don't worry about how it looks, worry about how it feels. Ooh, and you can feel some muscles shifting or popping. As long as there's no pain, you're fine. If there's pain, back off. Now, this is rolling back and forth. Another thing you can do with foam rollers is rock side to side, maybe one leg at a time. But if you, I'll do it this way. So I have one leg here. If you rock from side to side, you're gonna get that different stretch here. And if you do on the side going down, it's gonna be even more different. Now be careful because this is the IT band here. You don't wanna roll on that, it can cause damage. So you only wanna stay on the front parts of your leg. I'm just demonstrating. <laughs> and make sure you do both sides again. Always keep it even. Just feel it out. So for me, actually right here by my knees is sensitive. Um, but again, don't roll your knees, just the muscles. And it really does give you that good upper body workout, right? Okay. And when you're ready, you've done both sides evenly, start to roll backwards onto your hips. So your hip bones. And if that didn't feel good rolling back, <laughs> get onto your hips however you want. So the idea here is, your hips are on here. It may or may not be comfortable. If it's not, don't do it. Again, maybe you rock to your sides. So for me, this feels really good because I told you that was really sore when we were doing those bananas. So just play around, whatever's comfortable. Remember to breathe. Remember to use your feet, your arms, your whole body here to help put pressure into where it feels good. Again, don't do the IT so much. We're focusing on your hips here. <laughs> All right. When you're ready, we're gonna plant our knees, lift up, moving the roller to our underarm area. So you're gonna be doing the draw me like your French lady pose. This goes underneath your arm and there's some muscles here underneath that chicken wing towards the back of your ribs. It can get super tight. So first, just kind of lay on it, find a place and see if you can feel where that pressure is. You might have to adjust your hips. You may even want a blanket or something to sit on to balance your body out. So play around with that. You also may notice that your hips touching the ground here can also get a little bit of a pressure roll, right? So I'm feeling it right here on my sits bones while I'm also feeling it underneath my arm. And again, you can roll side to side or you could rock back and forth. <laughs> Whatever works for you. Or again, stay still. Maybe just lay here. Enjoy it. All right, there we go. Very nice pose. This is like your figure four. You could do a little crisscross here. Almost a Lord of the Fishes style. Why not? You can do stuff with your arms. I mean, there's no limit to what you can do besides if, you, again, you hit that pain threshold. So keep playing around with that underarm area. Hello, let me post the uh, playlist again. Welcome, welcome. And now we're gonna switch to the other side. You can roll over or you can just flip over. I'm just going this way because it works better for you guys seeing me. So again, you're doing the lounge to the side, placing the roller underneath your arm. 
finding that pressure point. Focus on the feeling. Remember to breathe. Oh gosh, <laughs> I found mine. That is very tight on this side, so I'm not even gonna rock. I'm just gonna sit here, maybe do my figure four. Ooh, and just press into it. So what are we doing here? We're doing foam rolling. It's called myofascial release. So we're rolling the muscles, yes, but also your skin is connected to your muscles by this layer called the fascia. It's a connective tissue. It can get kind of stiff and it needs to be stretchy. So we're also loosening the connection between your skin and your muscle, as weird as that sounds. Releasing any tightness or some buildup in your, in your body itself. Some really cool science to it if you want to read into it. All right, maybe I'll try. Ooh, nope, I'm not trying any movement. <laughs> but if you notice this, right? You need a break. Just lay down and do this for five minutes. So a few more breaths wherever you are on this side. That was my hip popping if <laughs> the mic picked it up. <laughs> oh, goodness. And these are, I think, the latissimus dorsi. I am not an anatomy manager, but it's a very sensitive area. Another one is on your chest. This is hard to roll, though. But you also get some tightness around your chest where it connects the front muscles to the back muscles on your ribs. Okay. Ugh. So now we're gonna try shoulder roll. So all I'm doing is lifting my chest up and now I'm putting my shoulder on it. Now this one you might need some balance for, but you're kind of snuggling up to it and just rolling your shoulder. Again, notice where your feet are, where your hips are. Notice if like one leg forward or back would help. Maybe rolling to the side, keeping your arm down, rolling the tops and sides of your shoulders. And for me, this one feels better rocking side to side rather than back and forth. As we're still in the age of COVID, I'm sure many of you have experienced the side effect of soreness from those vaccine shots. While you don't wanna do this immediately afterwards, moving your arm, getting that mobility back, giving it a little rub, while a little painful, right? But it's not pain, it's soreness, can help to get all of your body working to clear that out. Same thing here. And if there's ever too much pain, you know, Stop, back off, find what works for you. This feels actually amazing. <laughs> and maybe you roll down a little bit into your arm. There, again, there's no limit. You can do your whole body this way. Of course, it'll take a couple hours if you do it the right way, and we only have another 20 minutes. So we're gonna flip to the other side. Again, you can just roll over, or I'm gonna switch. Finding that shoulder, keeping your balance here. Noticing first just by laying still and finding that tight point. And once you find it, then maybe experimenting. So for this one, <laughs> oddly enough, right, each side's different for me. Now rolling back and forth feels good on this arm. Part of the joy of yoga is finding out what your body is saying to you. And each day, each moment, your body could be different. You may be able to do balance one day. You may fail the next. It's not a problem. It's natural and it's how your body reacts to anything. Weather, food, hormonal changes, stress, fitness, you name it. A little bit longer on this side here. And maybe explore doing the arm a little bit. And when you're ready, we're gonna come up to seated. We're going into hero pose. So if you can just do hero pose, that's fine. This one is where you're sitting down with your feet and you just rest onto your heels. But we're gonna try it with our roller by putting it between our legs. So you're sitting back on it. Now again, it depends on the dimensions of your calves and your quads. And I have to actually extend my knees wider here, but you should be able to put some pressure on it that then puts pressure on your muscles. At the size of the roller is gonna make a difference here too. It may or may not be comfortable, but give it a try. So for me, I'm feeling it a lot on the lower part of my calves. 
I'm gonna roll it back towards my ankles. Again, you wanna be very careful, ankles are very sensitive, so you don't wanna put your full weight on it, but just experiment, right? I think you're supposed to have it up higher, but <laughs> it likes to roll, and it puts pressure on my knees. So for me, I almost wanna fold my mat a couple times underneath, get a little padding, right? Maybe, oh, see, I'm tucking my toes <laughs> and trying that. Okay, interesting. Is this something that you would do again? If not, just experiment and maybe just go into your normal hero. There is nothing wrong with that. Two more breaths here. And now from here, we're going to get into what Ida really likes, working those legs, right? Your engines. So we just started doing that. We're gonna step forward. This looks like this, right? And we're gonna do our feet. So again, here we go. Maybe you wanna do this standing, but the idea is with balance and making sure that you don't have too much pressure, which apparently I have very sensitive knees today, <laughs> You put one foot on the roller and just kind of roll. There we go. Looks great, doesn't it? So for me, because I've got this nice trigger point one, I'm gonna put my toes on the, the really stabby, stabby side. It doesn't actually stab, it's just more texture. And just roll. Now this one for that tennis ball, perfect, right? You can use that ball. They do that a lot. If you have plantar fasciitis, again, rolling that fascia, right? Myofascial release plantar fasciitis, it's all the fascia. So this is again, rolling those fascia. Maybe rock from side to side. Remember, you can go different directions. Notice your posture, keep your shoulders back. And then switch sides again, being careful with your balance. Finding release on the other side. I'm holding the wall here again. Do what works for you. And again, try different directions. And once you're done with that, now I said we were similar to gate pose here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into gate. So take that roller off. I'm actually gonna use it as a little prop uh, to hold on to here, almost like a staff, right? So gate pose, you have one knee bent and the other leg is extended outwards, okay? Now for gait, I'm just gonna take this and you can use it as a balance, or if you want, take it overhead, right? Use both arms and do a side stretch here. Keeping your chest straight, stretching over, and if, if you don't like that, you can do your normal gait stretch. And wherever you are when you're ready, using your abs, lift up over and to the other side. Now, if you're holding your roller, this is gonna be an intense ab workout. That's great. If you don't have your roller, you can plant your hand, come to the side. Even if you have your roller, you can just rest on it and go like this. Yeah, there's no rules. And when you're ready, using your abs, lifting back up, plant it down and switch sides. And again, weak knees for me, I don't know why. <laughs> I'll put a pad underneath my knees and switch over. Coming up, inhale, first over towards the extended leg. Breathe here, finding the stretch you need in gait pose. Again, giving those engines a nice big stretch. They are what gives you your power. Inhale up. Exhale, other side, finding what you need on the reverse gate. <laughs> Whatever you need. And again, keep those shoulders back and down. One more breath here, and then with the abs, lift, 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 all the way up. Then forward fold here, planting it down. Let your hands down. You can put the, put the roller to the side. And bring your feet and knees, go into tabletop here, and maybe just a couple of cat-cows. Feel how that feels. 
We're gonna come and take our roller now. We're gonna sit on it. So again, balance. First, just notice how it feels to have it underneath you. With your feet planted, you might need your hands down or maybe a wall or something for support. But we're just gonna wiggle back and forth and give those sits bones a massage. Nice little rub on the glute area. And again, option here, you can roll back and give those muscles a rub. Whatever feels good to you. But stay around the bone area for now. We're gonna do the fleshy bits more in a bit. I feel like I'm like doing a rodeo bull riding. Wee hoo! Why not? It's kind of fun. You get that arm stretch in. You got no rules. Have fun. <laughs> okay. Ugh. Now. We're gonna take this and I'm gonna adjust. If you've got a lot of space, it's easier, but there's this graceful way to go from your sits bones, using your hands, roll back onto the backs of your legs. So now my legs are floating and I've got it on the muscles here. So again, you may need to put your bum down, that's fine, you can have it up. I like to just keep my legs floating and use my arms. Then notice where your fingertips are pointing, forwards or backwards or side to side. We worked out those wrists before. This could be very intense in your wrists. Wherever you are, just walk back and forth, roll from side to side. Here, if you want, you can cross your legs for additional pressure. It is additional pressure. It may be too much or it may be great. You may be like, whoa, right? Like, do whatever works for you. You could do an additional stretch, whatever feels right whatever gets the roller. And if it's too much, you could just sit here <laughs> and just put a little pressure on it. But don't go underneath the knees. Don't go on the knees. The ditch of the knee. Stay on those legs. Now you know what's next. Once you're happy there, you're gonna walk back even further and do your calves. So for this, your bum can definitely be down. I'm just gonna scooch up. You can just kick. You can go from side to side. This is one of my favorites. So you're rotating your hips again. Remember, keep an eye on your wrists. Maybe you take your hands into fists for a little less pressure. Next, I'm gonna cross my legs here. So I'm crossing calf over calf. If I push up and lift and I float my bum, look at that. Oh, so much pressure and it feels glorious. <laughs> so do what you need to here and do both sides. So this is gonna be a couple minutes here. I'm gonna get some water. Always hydrate. Again, noticing the wrists, as well as the calves, shoulders, your breath. This can be great before or after running. Because this, for Ada, is the big thing. You are 100% rolling your calves, your engines, those muscles that need to get worked out. So, <laughs> whatever works for you. Again, maybe you just like the flutter. That's fine. <sighs> I'll tell you what though. You will really want to stay hydrated after this because even though it doesn't feel like we're doing a big workout, you're putting a lot of stretching into those muscles. So again, this can improve flexibility, muscle recovery, movement, and it can help with pain reduction depending on what it is. But if it's done incorrectly, it could increase pain. So again, be careful, right? You want that gentle pressure on those knots in the fascia between your skin and the muscle to help. Let's find some peace and zen. All right, just a few more seconds if there's anything you need to make sure you cover on the other side as well. Now we've got those engines nice and warm. We're gonna roll the roller back to our sits bones and we're gonna start to do our back because we've got 20 more minutes. So again, make sure you've got lots of room. 
It could be graceful or it could be not so graceful. But the idea, actually I'll start back here. The idea is, again, you're rolling down, so you're gonna feel that on the spine. It's kind of like, we're getting into the sit-up portion, right? <laughs> See how that feels on your abs. If you go too far, it's gonna be way loose. But if you have it right next to your sits bones, maybe you could do that baby crunches, or maybe that's too much. No pressure, I can't do it. But maybe you've got those muscles that feels good to have that little crunch pose with the roller underneath. For me, all I'm gonna do is keep rolling down, massaging my back a little at a time. And you can go all the way up to your shoulders here. But I'm gonna have my hands behind my head like a sit up because it helps me to engage my core to stay balanced. My feet are really pressing into the earth and helping with that movement. This is one of the best uses of the foam rollers, in my opinion, because I always have a sore back. Right posture, sitting in front of a computer. I hold my tension in my shoulders as well. And again, all I'm doing is rocking forward and back, but if you find a spot, maybe stay there, stay still. Maybe lower your bottom. Maybe you lift, but then you rock side to side. Again, keep those options in mind. And no pain, okay? Now, make sure on your shoulder blades, you can move your arms in different directions. You can give yourself a hug. Each one of the different directions you move your shoulders will give you a different massage because your shoulder blades are massive. <laughs> uh, and when you're done, you can slowly and carefully rest your neck on it. But don't roll here. Just stay still with your neck divot on the roller and if you want to keep doing your back go right ahead as long as you need right but for me i'm just resting my neck on the roller itself and then i want to roll my head adjust my head from side to side okay we don't want to put too much pressure on your neck maybe this feels good if it doesn't you know what not to do and then maybe just stay still looking at the ceiling here <clears throat> take a couple deep breaths now again look at where we are our feet are here from here we could all we could do a figure four right we could do a pigeon we could hug our body in that actually feels nice to me because normally they say lift yourself all the way up and you're using your muscles so here it's a modified full scrunch because you've got your neck being lifted by the roller if there's any movements you want to take while you're in this position, do that now. Otherwise, we're going to switch. Um, but before that, let me show you one more thing. So if you go back onto your back area and the shoulders, I told you you could move your shoulders in lots of different ways, but one of my favorites that we're going to do again coming up here is, is literally the YMCA, right? So shoulders in a Y and roll it. Shoulders in an M above your head. So it looks like that. C on each side, so you're doing the side stretch like a banana. And then A. And for all of those, you could do, so I did the YMCA above my head, you could do it up. So it's Y, <laughs> M, C, A, okay. I guess I should demonstrate in case some of you all haven't seen it. Surely everybody knows who I am. C, A, right? Smiley face, winky face. Anyways, doing those on the rollers or even just laying on the ground gives you that mobility on the shoulders and the arms. It might feel good. So we're gonna do that this time by switching it. So we were laying on the roller this direction with your mat. We're gonna rotate it 90 degrees and we're gonna lay on it this way. This takes balance. So please be careful. It's one of my favorite ways to use it. And if you have a longer one, it's even better. So this is about the shortest you want it. And if you've got a mini one, this is not going to work. So maybe just do it on the ground. Uh, but if you have a long one, you want to have your sits bones kind of at the edge of it. And you want this to almost support your head. So for me, it's a little short. So I have to, yeah, I need my neck on here. So I'm actually floating my bum. <laughs> You want to have a long one so it'll go from here all the way down. That's another bonus for having a big one. So first, just notice 
Your feet are holding balance. You're lifting with your core. You want it on your spine. And if you just rock gently from side to side, again, keep your hands down <laughs> if you need that balance, you're gonna be rocking from side to side onto your erector spinae, the spine muscles that hold you up and they can also get really tight. So that's why I love doing this one. Breathe into it here. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do our YMCA. So find, <laughs> find that balance where you can hold yourself steady, your head is supported, lift your hips here. It's almost like a bridge for me and do those YMCA's. Notice how different it feels. And if you rock from side to side, the pressure it puts on your body, as long as it feels good, right? And maybe you just do this instead. Take your arms up, bring them towards your legs, inhale up and back. This is a big shoulder rotation, big shoulder rotation. Make sure it feels okay. You can also do like the angels, right? So you inhale your arms up above head, crisscross, swipe down. All of this is just moving your arms and your body is doing the balance work. And if it doesn't work, don't do it. So we've done our arms, find that comfortable place for them. And we're gonna do our legs now. So this is really gonna challenge your balance. Try to lift one foot just a little bit and notice how that feels. Just hover that foot above the ground. Breathe. Remember, it's okay to put it back down. Then switch sides and notice just by switching feet, how much your body shifts on this roller. Now, I'm gonna have my hands down first just to give me a little extra traction. It's actually all of my forearm is touching the ground here. So the idea is to march slow motion, lifting your foot and then switching so that your balance shifts while you're holding steady on your roller. Some days I can do this with my hands up. Let's see how it goes today. Lift, woo, shift, lift, shift. So this is very difficult. There will be days when this does not work for you and that's okay. This is also a thing that has been done in physical therapy. So if you need that, you can do it. Uh, if it doesn't work, don't worry. Just another challenge for you. And I'm just gonna check my notes here. Ooh, okay. So, I think we're pretty good here. Um, when you're on here again, if there's any other movements you want, that's great. You could do sit-ups here. You've actually got more support on your back, even though it's less, right? You could also sit on it straddle-wise. I'm doing like a crab walk here, <laughs> right? Uh, and, and get different rolls for your sit bones, if that works for you. Again, no matter what you do, do both sides, play around with it. Look at this, it's almost like an inverted bridge and I'm just a swing here. <laughs> Why not? Why not have fun? There are so many things you can do with these. So I'm just doing hip rolls and rocking back and forth. Then try doing it, rotating back the way we started and just rotate your hips while on it. See how different that is. Which one feels better for you? Rocking while it's stationary or or rocking with it. <laughs> I kind of like this one, guys. This is great. All right, so wherever we are, we're going to go onto the ground. Start to cool down. Uh, again, notice your body, right? So you just did a lot of pressure on your spine and your neck. We don't want it to be too much. So continue to listen to your body as we go into the next part. So just you know, if you want to do a love knot, if you want to do some boat, you know, I love my boat coming down. Come onto your back and just notice how your body feels before we do our final stretches. You feel pretty tired, right? And all we've been doing is just stretching. Okay, we've been holding ourselves up to lots of core imbalances. Sneaky, sneaky. 
So we're gonna take our roller and we're gonna do our side twists. So put it on the side, you're gonna be twisting too. Leave it there. Pull your knees in, give yourself a hug. Maybe you rotate your knees and hips around, this time just on the ground, but notice you still get a little rub on the ground. Okay, bonus. Then pull them both in, give them that hug, maybe try to lift, see how different it feels without the roller on your neck. Come back down, keep one knee in, it should be the opposite side of where your roller is. Extend the other foot. Roll your raised ankle, both directions. And then guide your knee over in a twist, and it's gonna land on the roller. So you're doing a modified twist. If you wanna do a normal twist, go right ahead. The idea here is your shoulders stay down. Your other arm is facing away from the crossed leg, can be reaching out or above. You can look to the opposite side of your leg as well. Almost do a T-pose here and just relax into that twist. Keep breathing. You'll notice if you even move your roller a little bit, that little bit of pressure from your leg resting on it could still be a massage. We'll be here for about 20 more seconds. Make any adjustments you need. Maybe try and straighten your leg. Maybe you need to bend it more. Three more breaths. And when you're ready, you're gonna first just move your body in, hug your knee, then hug both knees, plant your feet down, and stay here for a moment. Then grab your roller and switch sides, adjusting as you need. Hug those knees in again. Then again, extend the opposite leg down, hugging the knee, that's on the other side of your roller. There it is. <laughs> and then roll your ankle on the raised foot both ways. And then when you're ready, guide your knee across to rest on the roller on the other direction. Keep your shoulders down, extend your arms as you need. Again, maybe look in the opposite direction of the twist. Finding what you need here with the ruler, without, up or down. Find what you need in order to make this your twist stretch. Breathe into it. And we'll be here again for about 30 seconds. And again, we have many more other ways that you can do this in all of my other aid yoga sessions, which are on YouTube. I'm using blankets, pillows, straps, balls. And now we have the foam roller. And if you join me next month on Christmas Day, we'll be doing weighted blankets, which will be even more snuggly and peaceful. I am also open for other suggestions on things that you would like to use to assist in your yoga. Three more breaths here. And when you're ready, first just moving your body, untwist. Hug both knees in and then plant them. And then when you're ready, we're gonna be doing a bridge. Now you can do a supported bridge, which, oh, we, the other one we've done is with blocks. So this is like a block except round, so it could be more challenging, but if you want to do a supported bridge, you can put it underneath. Now again, the option is which angle to do, that's up to you. If you wanna just lay on it again like we did before, go ahead. Wherever you are, your heels should be near your hips, plant your hands down and then lift your hips. And then you can take your roller underneath here and you want it just behind your sits bones on your sacrum, the flat part of your back. 
So it should not feel like too much of a back bend, and if it is, maybe adjust it. And if it doesn't feel good, just do your normal bridge for as long as you can hold it, but we're gonna hold this again for about 30 seconds. Maybe you do have that block you can use. And if you do nothing, you do short bridges, you're welcome to do two normal bridges and a wheel at the end. If you're with me, again, another 20 or so seconds here. Your hands, again, can do the Y or the M. <laughs> Any position that feels good. I love doing the diamond with my hands here. Breathing. 10 more seconds. Again, if you're doing it independently, feel free to throw in your wheel. One more deep breath. And if you're in that wheel, tuck your chin before lowering. And if you're with me, engage your core before lifting and taking out this. So you should still be holding yourself up here. Take the roller, set it aside, plant your hands slowly, one vertebrae at a time, lower back down. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Now stay here with your hips flat. Don't move, not yet. Let your body settle into the reverberations after that supported bridge. Just two more breaths. Feel how different your body feels after that little back bend. And now if you like, you can do any other movements you need before we go into our final savasana. So you might need to hug your hips in, maybe you need to do some crisscrosses. If you wanted to, again, we had the options to do pigeons or a full pigeon, anything else that you need. Uh, you can pause the video, go ahead and do that. So if you have your balances, go right ahead. Probably don't wanna do those with the roller. And if you're with me, we're gonna get ready for our savasana. So again, just like at the beginning, maybe you put the roller underneath your knees or under your neck if that felt great. Maybe you'd put a pillow under your head. Maybe you put it over your ankle. So I started with it under my knees. For me, I'm gonna put it on under my feet. So one of the things that I talked about in block yoga is that your feet when they're lifted and not touching the ground, that is a subconscious sin <laughs> signal from your feet to your head that you're safe because you put your feet up and you can't run. So this can be really peaceful. And if you've got a wide enough one, your legs should be able to get to about that right distance. So wherever you are, again, settle into that savasana. Now shift your hip bones here. You have given them the workout. Move the fleshy bits. See how you can settle into the ground here. See if that feels good. I'm actually rolling my roller out a little bit and putting my heels on it. That feels even better. So it's not on my tendons, it's on my heels. And then you wanna take your head down, your hands should be at your sides. Again, palms up to receive energy, palms down for grounding. Maybe roll your head from side to side one more time, releasing that neck. Noticing how different your body feels from now as compared to when we started. And let your eyes settle close. Come back to your breath. Notice, again, any points of tension in your body. The same as we did before. We're gonna start by focusing our thoughts to our feet and ankles and just noticing if there's any other adjustments you need to make. Feeling where they touch the ground or your roller Noticing your legs, all those muscles, calves and quads, and shins, even your knees. Maybe pull your kneecaps up once or twice just to feel them. Notice your sits bones, your glutes and your hips and where they're touching the ground. Even now getting that gentle pressure from the ground as your body presses into the earth. Same with your back. Focus again on your breath. Notice how it makes your rib cage expand and press into it from your back and how on the exhale, it pulls up a little bit, just naturally, just notice it. And then look at your belly and notice how it rises and falls just naturally. Maybe you can feel your abs if you did a few of those crunches on your roller. 
And notice your hands, fingers, wrists. Your wrists may have gotten quite the workout. Maybe you do need to roll them one more time. And notice where your arms, where your hands and your arms and your shoulders all touch the earth. Again, that gentle pressure, finding stillness and evenness. And as you move up towards your shoulders again, noticing the points where your shoulders, your neck, and the back of your head are touching the earth. And notice on the breaths how your shoulders may raise or press into the earth. It's all fine. Go at your own speed. Finding calm. And as you come up to your head, let go of any tension that's being held in your jaw. And release your tongue from the top of your mouth. Release any tension you've got in your face and especially that little spot between your eyes and your eyebrows. Allow your entire body from toes to head to be completely relaxed. I'm gonna give you two minutes of silence to enjoy yourself. Focus on your breath and your intention. And if any thoughts come through, let them float away. They'll be there when we come out in a couple minutes. And as you're ready, you can stay here as long as you need, or you can begin to deepen your breath. Noticing how different your body feels now after that nice, long little massage, stretch, a little bit of yoga. Start to bring small movements into your fingers and toes. And to roll those wrists and ankles, noticing how different they feel now. And when you're ready, come back into that full body stretch, just like we started with. Mm. And when you're ready, just roll to one side in the fetal position. Don't come up yet, just stay on your side, maybe resting your head on your arms. Or maybe resting your head on your roller. <laughs> Whatever works for you. Take a few breaths here. And thank yourself for taking the time to take care of yourself here. Sometimes it seems like we need to do that more and being here with me, thinking of yourself, and getting that nice little exercise in, that's a wonderful thing. So thank yourself for that. And when you're ready, you can come up to seated, finding the comfortable position, or if you really want, you can sit on your roller, why not, all right? <laughs> Just like a block. And when you're ready, inhale your arms up, and then exhale, draw your palms to heart center. Come back to your intention, decide if you wanna keep it, finding peace today as you go on, or if there's something else you'd like to set it to as we move forward. Once you're ready, again, we'll seal it with two breaths. First inhale, and exhale, and then sealing our practice together. Inhale deeply, let everything go. And then take those hands with thumbs up to your forehead, your mind's eye, the center of your knowledge and intuition. The light, the love, the teacher in me honors the light, the love, and the teacher in all of you. Thank you so much for being here today. Namaste. Thank you all. I do appreciate you sharing this session with me.
please come back again in December for our weighted blanket yoga. And I look forward to another year with you very soon. Namaste. Take care, everybody.